Hello everyone and welcome to the game development uh, tools tier list video. In this video I'm going to try to explain six different categories from which you may decide uh, which section of development when it comes to the game development and design overall would be the right one for you. You see many people skip this segment uh, and uh, this is the reason why I'm trying to make this uh, video. Uh, there are several different tiers uh, that I decided to group different development tools. And in this video, I'm going to explain each uh, why these uh, segments are really crucial to understand and uh, reasons behind each tier and how this can have an impact on your game development. So first, uh, let me try to explain the first tier, the upper one. Uh, we can see that in this tier we have GameMaker, GDevelop and Stencil. Why this, why this tier exactly? Well, you see, when it comes to the game development, uh, if you are someone who just heard about it, uh, you're unsure what it is, you may search game development for uh, no coders or uh, game designer tools and whatnot and with these search terms these tools are most likely to pop up and this is because uh, these tools uh, may or may not have uh, coding included side by side with the graphical design features but regardless they will allow you to design game with only graphical user interface without coding involved whatsoever. Reason for this tier tool selection and in general is to represent uh, each of the segments that I'm trying to explain. So please don't mind if your tool isn't included. So let's start first with the stencil. Stencil is a graphical base tool that is relying itself on the brick code base system something like leg blocks for example you would be nesting code inside the code inside the code and that would be block base so basically as long as block can fit that means that uh, you have right code inserted all that remains is to set up the sprites in front of the actors set up the loops and whatnot and you will have your logic up and running second one is the g develop as you can see uh, with g develop uh, this uh, engine use event driven system with this system we have eventually logic uh, either from up to down or from the left to right basically on the left uh, being initializer which means that we are initializing logic uh, starting our loops uh, in general wrapping uh, particular section of the code and on the right we have the object or what uh, that particular code would be initializing and some of it properties bundle in. Uh, this uh, approach uh, is very useful if you want to see how code runs and potentially understand a little bit better, but it still isn't to be underestimated or maybe to praise compared to the other uh, approaches uh, used in these tools. Now, uh, finally, we have a game maker and game maker is using something uh, similar to ladder and I would rather call this node based system where you can group different types of logic and that logic can be connected with the dots or lines in terms of nodes and you can cross connect this uh, across the uh, template that you create and you can uh, browse this uh, and look at this uh, in, in form of a let's say for example uh, some kind of uh, chart uh, drawing application and uh, this approach uh, is uh, somewhat uh, desired for the designers that are entering you know the game design for the first time so basically this would be high upper tier for you uh, 
these tools while they are for the beginners if you know what you're doing you can still make a professional game. Uh, most of these will allow you to see the code, uh, they will allow you to customize the code, and they will still allow you uh, to take the professor professional approach and properly design the game. Now, uh, there are some other segments that you would uh, want to look at when it comes to choosing the right uh, tool for you. Not just the design approach that I mentioned, but also whether a particular tool is open sourced, is it closed source, is it source available, does it have some sort of clause or freemium model. Besides this, you would uh, want to choose your platform, um, check whether a particular tool is platform specific, is it cross platform, what kind of platform does it offer, is it like uh, mostly suitable for web, uh, is it for consoles, is it for uh, Android, is it for desktops, um, you know, Windows, Mac, Linux and whatnot. So this is something that you would uh, want to consider when it comes to the choosing these tools. All right, so let's move um, tier down, uh, basically high lower tier as I call it. This uh, particular name scheme that I decided to choose is because we are still in the high level programming segment but compared to the tools from the above uh, we have tools that are somewhat industry-based standard these tools may also offer you graphical design but they are something that you will uh, have in professional development environment and especially uh, these three tools represent three different uh, the business professional or enthusiast environments. As you can see, for example, with the first tool, Godot, we have a tool that's basically open sourced. You know, uh, it allows you to design 2D games, it allows you to design 3D games, and it has all the features that a professional tool may need. Compare this second on the list, we have Unity. Unity is most widely used engine today uh, it has most published games and this is a tool that you will see most uh, on the job listings for example when it comes to the independent development and overall project uh, availability uh, and the uh, last one is the unreal for example you might not see this tool uh, being popular as much as Unity is, but most uh, AAAN companies will aim to use tools such as these. And this is basically something that you want to consider when choosing the high lower uh, tier segment, because compared to the high upper tier, you have industry, industry standards and these standards may show different variety when it comes to the licenses, when it comes to the games that are being made with these tools. And often you will find that most of the games, whether they are AAA, AA or A titles, that uh, showcase these tools and you may use uh, these games as examples in order to see what tools are capable of. Now this is overall high uh, programming tier for you. Now, if you want to go to the meter, you may ask yourself why exactly that will be the case. Well, you see, so far, high upper tier, while it allows us to design code uh, with, with graphic toolkits, uh, well, it allows us to customize that code. It doesn't allow us freedom freedom of choice. Well, we may have multiple platforms, but we don't actually have is freedom over compilers. You see, when you are designing a game and that game is designed with a specific tool, you may have more languages uh, to work with. For example, you might have C++, uh, Lua, uh, C-sharp, uh, and whatnot, uh, allowing you to 
develop a game. You might have some specific language, for example, uh, Torque 2D and Torque 3D uh, engines are using their own language, you know, Game Maker is using their own language. So what happens with these tools is that they are not actually only compiling, they are transpiling the code, which means that they are taking your code that you have written, they are uh, moving that code to the transition layer and then they are compiling that code afterwards. So the code that you wrote directly isn't the one that's exiting uh, the project and actually being the one that you are running in form of a binary. This is typically done in order to uh, fix uh, your personal mistakes in form of a code polishing, uh, you know, uh, allowing you to avoid uh, dealing with the some of the post-processing uh, tasks uh, such as memory management and whatnot. And while this is useful in terms of performance, it does uh, bring uh, bugs, it uh, does bring unwanted code, it does bring uh, project management rather than code management, which basically means what? Uh, you might have, um, let's say, uh, Go.version 3, right? Go.version 3 works on specific version of operating system, and you might have specific versions in that particular engine. Now, your project that you create is tied to that particular version of an engine, which is tied to libraries that is pulling from a particular operating system that it supports. So, if you move from a particular operating system version, and if you move from a particular version of the tool that you are using, this doesn't mean that your project will automatically be able to move. And what this ca is causing uh, is uh, project incompatibilities and you as developer being unable to run particular code. And this basically breaks the code and this can easily happen uh, within less of a year of your project development. If new version comes out, it has critical features that you need, but you simply can't move the previous version so you're stuck with it sadly this is the case with these self-isolated environments which we call engines now let's move to the mid upper tier what this tier actually allows you so we have three different tools we have um, libgdx we have uh, love2d and we have jmlk game action let's start from the love2d so basically, Love2D is a framework. What is a framework? Framework is a set of uh, libraries form in a specific design tool that allows you to create your app or a game. In this case, uh, the framework itself uh, being as it is, uh, is the one that is uh, driving uh, the whole creation of the code. This means what? When we design the specific game, it does have a specific set of libraries, it does have a language uh, and its version number, etc. etc. And all of these are used in favor of a particular frame. So if we decide to choose uh, to use a specific framework, we will inform ourselves there, which version of the language is used, which compilers, which interpreters and whatnot. And if we inline ourselves with what the particular framework offers, that would be our designated uh, choice for creation of a particular game. In general, these tools allow you to create game from the code, which means ease of maintenance of the code, which means longevity of the code, which means less bugs, and which potentially allows you to understand in a deeper level 
how code works and how you're designing logic uh, of your game. Now, compared to the high upper tier, you may be asking yourself if these tools are created and they aim to be designed directly from the code, how are you actually designing your game when it comes to the assets importing? Well, you see, compared to the uh, tools in the high uh, tier, you will have a program that is uh, based uh, out of the game creation itself. Think of it uh, as a template designer that will allow you to create uh, maps uh, for your games and export these maps in XML, JSON or whatnot. Most popular one and community standard is Tile30. And many of these tools tend to be compatible uh, with this style editor. Trick with these uh, editors is that because of the nature of the code and the nature of the media, currently more to the uh, tile creation software is present that is universally based than 3D ones. 3D ones are mostly non-existent, not exactly, but mostly. While with the 2D uh, tile creation softwares, we have multiple choices. I will not be getting into those, but what's important is for you to understand that you can still graphically drag and drop all sprites that you need, and then when you finish the design, work di directly with it by using the code. All right, so let's move on to the LibGTX. LibGTX compared to the Love2D, which is dependent on Dua and Logit, this is Java-based tool and it's a really good one. You see, uh, Java itself is uh, industry standard in the business and this means having a good rock solid base uh, for the performance applications, uh, secure applications, network applications and whatnot. LibGTX allows us to design both 2D and 3D games from the code. You might be asking how exactly? Well, you see, uh, as I previously explained with the Love 2D, uh, this tool allows you to uh, create uh, 3D scenes independently and this would work basically uh, by you as a user creating a project, deciding what project would be, importing that project in IDE of your choice. As, you, as I said, you do have a choice, you can use SnapPins, you can use IntelliJ, you can use Eclipse or whatnot, whatever you like that uh, supports uh, Java and once you start the project and initialize uh, the JVM from there, you would be faced with the scene editor from which you would be able to design your games. Now, uh, this is uh, predominantly 2D tool and a good one. When it comes to the 3D, these features are typically minimalistic, but there is a lot of bit to learn from it. So uh, you can still test this, you know, see what's so available, possibly commit changes and not underestimate, even if it's minimal. Now, for yet, in this mid-upper tier, I left JMonkey Game Engine. You see, this is also a Java-based tool, but it's a little bit different. This one is refined for professional development. Yes, it's not on the Unity and in Unreal level yet. Many people are working on it independently, but it's the tool that I will highly recommend to value and cherish and possibly commit changes to it with the patches, bug fixes and whatnot. And let me explain why. You see, when it comes to the LibGTX, uh, sorry, when it comes to the JMonkey Game Engine, uh, they are offering their own SDK. And trick is that this SDK is actually a little bit modified uh, NetBeans IDE, uh, which is really useful when it comes to the remaining true to the code. And uh, it does include, uh, you know, scene editor, 
uh, 3D interface and whatnot, but everything that you create will be saved in a human readable code, which is Java code. And this is something highly valuable when it comes to the version control, when it comes to the project management overall, because it's still a code that you can freely edit. And moreover, it isn't just limited to their own SDK. On their website, you have DOI segments, so you can use any, you know, Java-based uh, editor. You can import libraries, same as you would with the any Java project, and it would work perfectly fine. And this is something uh, that uh, I highly support compa compared to the high-level tier. I don't think think that uh, tools should enclose you in their own ecosystem because uh, then you're, use, you're losing uh, choice and this limits you as a developer when it comes to the learning new things and potentially enhancing your skills. Okay, this was missed upper tier. So let's move to the middle lower tier. You might be asking when you heard all of this, why would you want to go even lower? And let's look at let's take a look at the tools. I chose three different ones: Orx, SFFL, and Rayleigh. Compared to the tools above, as I previously said, they are frameworks. Frameworks aimed to select carefully language compiler all of their libraries. When it comes to the middle and lower tool. Tools. They are more versatile, meaning what? They are core libraries, and being core libraries allows them to be ported to many different languages. Let's say that you have uh, uh, learning C++ in mind, and you do learn C++, and you decide to design, to design a game with the SFML or Rayleigh, for example. You can do that, but moreover, these tools are available in other languages. Let's say that you decide to move to Rust. You can still use SFML. You can still use uh, Relib, which is really useful. There are many bindings and these libraries offer specific bindings page from which you may see which uh, programming languages are available for you. And usually there are more than five languages, in some cases more than 10 languages, which is really good for versatility. Now, what else? Besides versatility, you have more choice uh, over the performance optimization. You have uh, more cho choice when it comes to the underlying code. Uh, you have choice over the compilers that are going to be used. You have a choice over linking the libraries that you're going to use, which is very, very useful in the long run. So basically these tools are going to make you not just good game developer or designer, they're going to make you into a good developer. And this is something that will um, bring you more broad perspective of programming. You will be able to accomplish things that those from high tier simply cannot, because you will have different visions of developer. Uh, what developer mean? and what developer can bring to the table, meaning that more freedom will be given to you and more freedom you will be able to embody in your own game projects, which is something to highly appreciate. And of course, there are many, many other benefits coming from this tier. All right, let's move on to the lower upper tier. When you heard this from the middle lower tier, you may be asking yourself, why the low upper tier? Well, you see, these tools so far from the high and mid tier, while they're allowing you to design um, different aspects um, of the internal components, they allow you to manipulate them, but uh, they are typically relying on more uh, low tier system calls. And 
When it comes to the tools, overall you have different segments as I previously explained, high tiers are the engines, mid upper are the frameworks, mid lower are the libraries. And when it comes to the libraries, uh, they can still rely themselves on other libraries. In these cases, uh, we have three crucial graphical libraries. We have the SDL, we have GLFW, and we have LWGGL. Now, what is three in particular? You see, when it comes to the SDL, it's an industry standard and a community standard. It's a uh, layer in its own, it's aimed to be versatile, meaning that uh, it supports multiple platforms, it supports DirectX, OpenGL, Vulkan. This means that with a single code you may open window on all three platforms and potentially on all operating systems that it supports. Now, when this comes to the GLFW, it's uh, completely opposite. It's aimed to be minimal, it relies only on the OpenGL, but this allows it uh, to be high performant and allow you to know what you're doing with your project. Uh, and last one is the LWJGL. Uh, this tool is in Java ecosystem. This uh, API is the one that kind of goes back and forth. It allows you to uh, call OpenGL directly, but it also leverages uh, GLFW to some extent. So this is a mix of both. Uh, and it's really interesting that it's high performance and uh, it brings a lot to the table uh, when it comes to the uh, Java-based environment. So it's still something that you want to consider when it comes to the working with the low upper tier. You may be asking yourself why you would want to design a game with this tier. Well, you see, when it comes to this tier, it's not just about the games anymore, it's about the tools. And even with the mid-lower tier, you might figure out that when you're working on a game, you're working with a particular tool, you're working with it a lot. You might want all the time to develop either an extension, a specific library, or you know, provide bug fixes and whatnot, and you will figure out at some point in your life when it comes to the game development that you will want to work on a particular tool. With the, with the high uh, tier this is almost impossible. It is to some extent, but not in a form that I explained. With the mid tier, somewhat it is, at, and it is something that you can do. With the low tier, you have most freedom in this segment when it comes to the uh, changes that you can do with the code base that you are using, which is highly useful. And last tier is directly using an API when it comes to the DirectX, OpenGL, or, or Vulkan. This is still something that you would want to do even when it comes to designing a game. Uh, let's, talk, uh, let's take a look at um, RTX uh, graphics card uh, that uh, allow you to use uh, mirroring feature, right? Which was um, really popular, you know, it uh, brought change to the market. Uh, if uh, you would be the one developing it, you would, could possibly be the first one to create a particular game. Uh, first one uh, to be able to leverage the code for these tools would be directly APIs. So this is something to consider when it comes to the um, game development. APIs will be the one to get the things first. They can do things done because they are the ones that are accessing the drivers, they are the ones that are accessing the firmware that allows them to drive capabilities that allow you to design a game. This is something that's uh, very crucial and while you might uh, be thinking that uh, you know these are graphics you know what can you do beside game well trick is a lot you know you can design models you can design um, you know uh, 
uh, architectural type of things, uh, you might work on data driven things, you might work with uh, the AI and whatnot. And this is something uh, that's really important. Even when it comes to the designing game alone, you would be getting feature first, you'd be able to leverage uh, what other tools cannot. Uh, while this is hard to do, it isn't easy. You can possibly create things that uh, high tier cannot do, that mid tier would have troubles doing, and just low tier can do. So, uh, when it comes to these tiers, uh, hopefully I succeeded to explain and bring a little bit closer to you what game development is, uh, what it can be. Now, please uh, don't mind me choosing these tools alone. There are many out there and this is the tier list. It isn't an iceberg. Iceberg is for another video. I, I haven't explained subsets, you know, you have OpenGL Embedded System Edition, this is a subset of OpenGL. You have, you know, your adventure game engines, um, you have uh, tools that are specific to consoles and whatnot, whether those consoles are virtual and physical. Overall, that's a topic for another video, but hopefully these tools brought you good overview of what you can potentially create, uh, how you can create a specific project or game, and what can be done with uh, each tier. So, without further ado, not to prolong this any longer than it's needed, please write in the comments what you think about uh, my view of game development tools and specifically this tier list. Feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you for tuning in for this video and take care. Bye bye.